grace and peace to you all my beloved this is the day the lord has made let us rejoice and be glad in it today is the 25th day of the eighth month of the year 2020 by the grace of god i am alive here and you are also well and alive there listen god bless you so much the temperature here is 77 degrees fahrenheit quite nice weather uh, 25 degrees Celsius. I don't know what your temperature, your climate, or the temperature is where you are, but I believe whatever it is, it's a great thing because God doesn't give us anything that is evil, it's anything bad. In terms of weather and all those things, He has given us whatever He does, He gives to us, is good for us. So uh, let's thank God for His goodness. My beloved, God has been good. Today I want to share with us a word from the book of Jeremiah, chapter 11. Jeremiah chapter 11 okay the children of Israel after all the promises that God made them and after all the good things that God did for them and continues to do for them and all, for all the great deliverance that God delivered them and the covenant that God made with them those are all things that were a testament to the fact that God really loved them and saw them as his people. But we find them time and time again going back to do things that God told them not to do. You know, worshiping idols in every street corner in Jerusalem, in Judah, and they had erected, you know, temp uh, what do you call altars for Baal. You know, doing all these things just to spite God. And so here you have God speaking to the prophet Jeremiah telling them him go and speak to the children of Israel go and tell them and remind them of the promise that I made to their forefathers and what their forefathers did to incur my wrath remind them that of that so here you have Jeremiah goes there and in Jeremiah chapter 11 from verse 3 when God called Jeremiah he says Go and say unto the children of Israel, Thus saith the Lord God, Thus saith the Lord God, that God is the land speaking, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel. Cursed be the man that obeys not the words of this covenant. God has a covenant with them. And in God's covenant, he desired, he desired, desired for the children of Israel to do his perfect will and his perfect will alone that they don't worship idols, that they don't get themselves mismated with the things, the, the cultures around them. And so God sends Jeremiah, go and remind them, and tells them, tell them that cursed is everyone that disobeys my covenant, that does not do what I have stated in my covenant. It says, which the covenant, and what is the covenant? Is that which I commanded your fathers in the day that I'm blessed. How about you? Good, 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 good. It says, which I commanded your fathers in the day that I brought them forth out of the land of Egypt from the iron furnace, saying, Obey my voice saying obey my voice and do them obey my voice and do them you know according to all which i command you so shall you be my people there's a condition god tells the children of israel if you do my will if you obey my word then you shall be my people and i will be your god there is always a condition my beloved if anybody tells you it's unconditional, they keep on saying unconditional. So people are living in sin and say, God's love, love for me is unconditional. And they are living in sin and they call themselves Christians. No, 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 it's conditional. Listen to what he tells us. Say, say, if you obey my word and do my will, then you'll be my people and I'll be your God. And that hasn't changed. We have to obey God, do his will, then we'll be his people and he'll be our God. It, is, it has not changed at all. No, 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 it has not changed. It hasn't. So please don't believe it if anybody tells you those things just to make you like them or to make you feel at ease with yourself in the things that you are doing that you know are wrong. My beloved, 
you know, and he says, um, that I may perform. And God says, he says, that I may perform the oath which I have sworn unto you. And God swears an oath. <laughs> Is it, is it, and God swore by himself because he could not find it. He swears by himself. You know, is it that I may perform the oath which I have sworn unto your fathers to give them a land flowing with milk and honey as it is this day? Then answered I, that is Jeremiah, and said, So be it, O Lord. God says, telling the children of Israel, If you obey my word, and you do my commandments, you do my, what my word says you should do. I will be your God, you will be my people. And when that happens, then I, the Lord, will perform the oath, the promises that I made to your fathers. I will perform it for you. And that, that I will bring you to a land flowing with milk. I will bring you to a, man, a land full of prosperity. I will bless you. I will bless you. That's what he said. He told his ch the children of Israel. And surely that is what they did when he brought them out of the land of Egypt. And he brought them to a place. In fact, when Moses sent the spies to go and look at the land, they came back and saying the grapes were so huge that the clusters of grapes, when they carry them, if they can't carry them on their shoulder, so heavy. <laughs> I'm yet to see that kind of grapes this day. But then he says, therefore, therefore, and what happened? Did the children of Israel do that? No. If you read the entire chapter, you find out that God says, but you failed to do that. You know, the children of Israel have abandoned me, have turned their back to me, worshiping idols, building altars for Baal in every street corner. And God has had it. God has had it. At that point, he tells the children of Israel, tells Jeremiah, Jeremiah, I don't want you to pray for them. My beloved, what is the title? There comes a time when my intercession or your intercession for me, if I'm living in sin and willfully sinning, God will say, I will hear any prayer, any petition that anybody makes for you. See, today we have so much, what do you call it? We have compromised the standard of holiness. We have lowered the bar so much so that we feel like anything goes. We feel like anything goes. It doesn't work that way. God tells Jeremiah in verse 14, in verse 14 of the book of Jeremiah chapter 11, say, therefore pray not for these people, neither lift up a cry or prayer for them. For I will not hear, I will not hear them in the time that they cry unto me for their trouble. I will not hear them when they fall into trouble and they cry unto me. God says, I will not hear them. My beloved, yes, God says today, if you and I willfully, willfully sin, we know that which we're doing is wrong and we live in and we sin. He says, no amount of prayer on your behalf will he hear. He will not hear. We'll compare him to hear. He tells Jeremiah, don't pray for these people. There comes a time when my prayer, your somebody's prayer, even my prayer for myself, if I'm living in sin, God will not hear. What is the reason why God says he will not hear? He said, what has my beloved, verse 15, to do in my house? What have the children of Israel to do in my house? God is so angry that he wants to throw them away. Seeing she, that is Israel, has wrought lewdness. Lewdness, that word lewd, has, is this, it's not only in the worshiping of idols, but even in their lifestyle. You know, lewd practices, lewd practices. You know, adultery, fornication, homosexuality, lesbianism, all these lewd behaviors and lewd conduct abounded. Then, and so God said, I have had it, seeing that she has wrought lewdness with many, lewdness with many, and the holy flesh, their flesh, the holy flesh, 
God see, calling them his holy children, his children that he has sanctified and made holy. He said that holy flesh is passed from them. No more. Right now they are filled with sin and filled. He said, when thou does evil, when thou do, when they do evil, then they rejoice in it. My beloved, if you look at this description of Israel at that time, which caused God to be God to be angry, to say to Jeremiah, if you pray to for them, I will not hear. My friend, this is a mirror image of our world today. From nation to nation to nation. In our world today, our nation, even America, so much lewdness. We glorify and rejoice in sin. We legalize perverseness. It is so sad when we call people, everybody walking around calling themselves man of faith. It's a difference in a man of it's a man of faith. He's so nice. Man of faith and being nice will not take you to heaven. Because being a man of faith, what kind of faith? There are two faiths today, my beloved. Let me share with you. There are two faiths. There is Satan's faith, and there is the faith of Jesus Christ. In Satan's faith, when Satan heard at the creation, when God created Adam and Eve, and he told them, be fruitful and multiply, that was a faith established by God. That was a faith. You know, Satan heard it. And Satan said, wow, be fruitful and multiply? Okay, I'm going to find a way so that they will not be fruitful. So Satan's faith is don't be fruitful and multiply. And if you should at all, you should serve me. And so what did they come up with? Okay, two ways that you can, you, 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 you to, to abort uh, fruitfulness. One, when you, you can have all the immoral lifestyle and of fornication, fornicate all you want. But when the baby is conceived, kill that baby. That's Satan's faith, kill the baby. God's faith, be fruitful and multiply, so the baby has to be born. Satan's faith, kill the baby. And today our nations, the world, are bound with that kind of faith. Okay? Our nation, the nations of the world, are bound with that kind of faith. Abortion. Abort the baby, kill the baby. It's not a baby. As long as it's in a womb, it's not a baby. About the baby. So you see Satan's faith? Okay? And then there is the other one that Satan says, okay, fine. Okay, a man and woman, they can be fruitful and multiply. That's why God made Adam, made Adam and gave, made Eve for Adam. So, so Satan says, okay, fine. I'm going to make sure, I'm going to put in them. There's a spirit, that spirit that promotes homosexuality. Satan said, instead of a man marrying a woman, I'm going to make sure man marries man. Because they cannot procreate. And I'll make sure a woman marries a woman. And so that is what our world is practicing today. Man and man, woman and woman, abortion babies. Those are the faith of Satan. Satan's faith. So that if any man, if any man condones those kind of acts, and say it is okay, then that's, and, and, and that person professes to be a man or woman of faith, then you, you can know which kind of faith that person is, is, is following. Because God's faith says a man shall be married to a woman, the two shall be one, and they shall procreate, they shall give birth, they shall be fruitful and multiply. Satan's faith says a man can marry a man, a woman can marry a woman, because, and so that they will not procreate. And if a man marries a woman at all, when a baby is conceived, you can just kill that baby. Anybody following that, that is another, uh, Satan's faith. So you cannot tell somebody, this is a man of faith, and then think that, you know, and then some of us have become so gullible. Then we say, yeah, no, 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 no. You can go to church all you want. And if you subscribe to that kind of belief that it's okay for a man, a baby to be killed, aborted, or for a man and a man and a woman and a woman 
You can be as nice as you want. Satan even sometimes was nice. You know how Satan was nice? What did he do? After 40 days of fighting, Jesus fasting, he was pretending to be here, acting like he was nice. He said, Jesus is hungry. So what does he do? He said, Jesus, take him to a, a, a pinnacle. He says, uh, you know, why don't you turn this stone into bread? He's being nice. It was not, he, he'd be nice turning a stone into bread because, you know, Jesus, and Jesus said, man shall not live by bread alone. Satan was trying to be nice. And Satan took him again to the pinnacle. He said, look, the whole world is mine. I'll give it to you. Well, he's lying. It doesn't belong to him. He's a thief. But he's trying to be nice. Jesus, if you only bow to me, I'll give you the whole world. So just so because being nice and being a man or a woman of faith, we have to find out what kind of niceness and what kind of man of faith you are. Because if you and I are men and women of faith, we will love the things that God loves, hate the things that God hates. We will submit to the leadership of the Holy Spirit. We will be transformed and changed from, our, from, from the heart. We will not have our own standard of whatever. Ours will be Jesus Christ and Him crucified. And that was Israel. You know, they changed everything. Worshipping idols, practicing lewdness, and all in the name of saying, we are God's people. And God says, no, you are not. You are not, because when I entered into a covenant with your forefathers, I told them that if you obey my word and do my word, then you will be my people and I'll be your God. And that hasn't changed. And because they failed to do that, and they resorted to worshiping idols and practicing lewdness, God decided that he would never hear any prayers on their behalf or even their own prayers. My beloved, it is my prayer today that if that is where we are today, we'll repent and turn away from those kind of lifestyle. My beloved, we cannot have, we will not enter into heaven because we are nice. We will not enter heaven because we are in a kind of so-called type of man of faith or woman of faith. No. Faith in Jesus Christ transforms us, changes us. Faith in Jesus Christ compels us to do God's perfect will, to hate the things that God hates and to love the things that God loves. That is the faith that we have in God. The faith that we have in God is through Jesus Christ. And we obey Christ and humble ourselves at his feet. Beloved, this is the word of God that he wants me to share with us today. You know, how harrowing it, 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 it sounds when God, who created you and I, because of your sins and my sins, because of our abandonment of him, abandoning him, and willfully practicing sin, decides that he will not hear my prayer or your prayer. When I'm talking about practicing willful sin, when you know what you're doing is wrong and you still do it anyway because of some carnal gains that you think you, you'll get. My beloved, it's a dangerous thing for you and I to fall into the hands of the living God by willfully sinning. Because when that happens, you'll be in a perpetual state of misery because your prayers will not be answered and anybody praying for you will not be heard because you willfully have chosen the faith of Satan to follow after the things that Satan loves. Willful sinning vis-a-vis -vis aborting babies, lying, fornicating, practicing lewdness, homosexuality, lesbianism, transgenderism, queerness, and all those kind of things that have been manufactured and, 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 and pumped into the heart of, 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 of man has been practiced because all these people are following in, in the faith of Satan. Beloved, God is calling upon us to repent, to repent, to turn from our wicked ways, to surrender to God through Jesus Christ. It is not too late now. You may not have known that this thing is a serious, this lifestyle that we are talking about is a dangerous thing. It's one that will cut you off from God permanently. But now you've heard it. And so, 
God wants you and I to repent, to turn, to surrender our all to him. Jesus Christ bids you come to him. Again, like I said, being nice will not let you go to heaven. There are many people walking down the street, and I've told you, Satan himself acts nice, but just because he's acting nice. Because when he gets you to go and do things and promises you all the things that he promised you, he's acting nice. But many a time, he does not even honor the things he tells you to do. You know? My beloved, this is God's word. This is God's word. When you go back, read Jeremiah chapter 11. See what the children of Israel had to go through when they turned their back to God instead of worshiping idols. And God decided not to hear their prayer anymore. May it not be so concerning you and I. May we see wisdom in the word of God today and turn and surrender our heart to God through Jesus Christ. Listen, God bless you, grace and peace. This is Pastor Pimpong. I am on my, okay, uh, I've walked 8.33 miles thus far. And by the grace of God, every time I get home, I would have walked 10 miles for the day. God bless you. Take care, my beloved. Bye-bye. Grace and peace.